What is a tractor PTO? We're gonna tell you all about it today. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy, side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. All right, so this button right here, yellow button, sometimes it's something you push, but in this situation here, you're gonna pull on it. That is your PTO knob. It's gonna engage and turn on the PTO if your tractor is on. So let's define a PTO. What that stands for is a power takeoff I can see where they're going with it so basically what that means is you're gonna have a an output shaft either underneath here on a mid PTO or a rear PTO a set of splines and so when you tie in a PTO shaft on an attachment to it it's then gonna provide power so it's taking off power uh, from the main shaft here and so I think maybe that's why they call it a power takeoff but I didn't come up with it so we're gonna roll with it all right so diving a little deeper into how a PTO works and what it's all about you can compare it to a belt drive system or to a high hydraulic motor. There's other ways to power attachments that might be on a piece of equipment. Many simplistic or more basic lawnmowers, for example, are going to have belt drive mowers on there. So that's a different way to power an attachment like a lawnmower. And that's typically going to be a cheaper way to go about it. Now on the flip side, one of the more expensive ways to power an attachment is going to be like what you see on my skid steer. If I want to drive a mulcher head or a brush hog on my skid steer, that's all going to be using hydraulic power, hydraulic pumps and motors. And those are very expensive, going to really raise the cost off. Typically you see that on more like construction equipment, not really on tractors and not on lawnmowers either. So you have different options with belt driven, PTO driven, and hydraulic motor driven. The commonality is that with any of those systems, you need an engine to initiate that power, all right? And so that's where in the PTO system, it's all coming from power generated off of the engine. It starts here, it works its way back through an output shaft in a way similar to the PTO shaft that drives it back to the transaxle, all right? Now in simplistic terms, there's just a lot of gearing in here to get to the right ratios, the right speeds, and then that ties into a small output shaft for the mid PTO, and then also a larger output shaft for the rear PTO. Now I'm not a super technical guy, so we're not gonna get into all the details, but it is a marvel of engineering if you think about it because the output shaft for the PTO on the backside, so your rear PTO is gonna be a standardized 540 RPMs for all of you subcompact and compact tractor owners. Now for your mid PTO, it's typically gonna be around 2100 RPMs. That will vary a little bit from manufacturer to manufacturer, like a John Deere versus Kubota versus Mahindra, that kind of thing. But the thing with mid PTO is that typically those are gonna be for your belly mowers, all right? And so belly mowers are very specific to a tractor brand and a tractor model. You can't just go buy a generic belly mower and slap it on any old tractor. That's gonna be specific from the manufacturer. Whereas on a three point hitch, there's a slew, just a whole world of attachment brands and manufacturers and companies out there that you can get. And since the three point hitch and the PTO are all standardized back here, you have a lot of options. Now, sometimes I don't want to confuse you too much, but you are going to hear the term front PTO. So we have rear PTO, the 540 we talked about, mid PTO, the 2100 RPM, give or take, that we talked about, and then this front PTO. Now, I know there's always exceptions to the rule, but I can't think of any right now. And typically, when you have a front PTO, it's actually a kit that runs off of the mid PTO, all right? And a really good example for this is if you get a front mounted snowblower. So you can get a 47 or a 54 inch front mount blower for the John Deere 1025R. So when you buy that kit from your dealer, and again, just like that belly mower, the front blowers are typically very specific to the model of tractor, uh, to the brand of tractor, that kind of thing. You can't grab a, a front mounted snowblower from Kubota and put it on a John Deere without having some major fabrication skills. So when you get that blower, you get a whole kit for it, all right? You get a quick hitch, you get these other brackets that mount on there, uh, reverse override sensors, some other little adapters and things like that. And then the important thing is, is you get a long PTO shaft that's gonna mount into a carrier bearing up here, but connect back to the same spot that your mid-mount mower, your belly mower would connect to. So you're technically running it off of the mid PTO and driving your front snowblower. So from what I know about PTO shafts is that when tractors were really designed to be used on farms, you know, farmers aren't the, the richest folk in the world, right? So they wanted to have a good, reliable solution that was pretty well foolproof, robust, easy to use, just didn't break down, right? So I think those reasons are why you still see PTO shafts on tractors today because they're just, they're simple to use, they're really reliable, they're really strong, you seldom have an issue with it. If you do, it's relegated to a couple of specific models that maybe were known to be problematic, or it could be something like a selenite issue, which is gonna be 
One of the more common problems with the PTO is if you have a solenoid that's not clicking and, and working and functioning like it should to activate or turn it off, that kind of thing. But seldom, seldom are you gonna have an issue with the PTO itself. Hey, now I know a lot of you are gonna struggle with connecting to your PTO shaft on your tractor. So we made a whole video all about tips to help make that process easier. I'd encourage you to check it out. There's also gonna be a product you can get to make that connection process easier. You're staring at it right here. It's the PTO link by tractorptolink.com. You go to their website to buy it, use code GWT to save 5% off of your order, but this is gonna move that connection point out further to a more accessible location on your tractor. Gonna take a lot of pain out of the process. This is a made in America company, all right? So a high quality, this is all machined all around here, very high quality solution. You can save some money again, with code GWT. So really one of the big things that sets this system apart from the others that are out there is it doesn't require any tools to install it, all right? So John Deere has a system where you actually have to take off, you have to take apart the U-joint on your attachments and replace it with this system. There's another system out there that does require tools to install. This is really easy, guys, it really is. You just line this side up with your PTO splines, you pop it on, just like a regular attachment and then it's there in place good to go that was one-handed by the way if you didn't notice this one here same thing on your attachment you just hold it up twist it in there pull the collar back on your attachment i am using two hands but that's it all right pop it in there and you're good to go so for ease of illustration i'm holding it here showing you but this is the tractor side that's going to be on there this is the attachment side all right so your normal pto splines you have six different splines that you have to line up with very little play in between there. It's gotta be exactly right. So you're taking it down to only four points to line up. So it just makes it a little easier and they're gonna have a little bit more play in it. So you just have to line them up just somewhat. You just kind of match it up. They're gonna have some play. They lock into place. And you can see this is just a spring loaded pin. All right, so that pops into place as well, helps lock it there. And then they do include one extra retainer pin that this is gonna be the attachment side. All right, you'll just pop it through. I think right here, yep. Get that through. You're locked in place, you're good to go. Again, visit tractorptolink.com, save 5% with code GWT. All right, so that gives you a pretty good general understanding of what a PTO is all about, but there's still a few critical things to know to make sure that you're using it the right way. So the first thing to know is what your PTO horsepower is, all right? And so you generally think of your engine horsepower, whether that's your car, your boat, your tractor, you're thinking of just the engine horsepower. But as you take the power from the engine, and drive it all the way through the system out to the output shafts on the PTOs, whether it's the, the rear or the mid, you're losing some power. It's not 100% efficiency. For example, just nominal numbers, you have 25 horsepower at the engine on this tractor, but the PTO horsepower at the output there is gonna be 18. So you're losing seven horsepower, 25 to 18. And on smaller tractors, it's a smaller difference, right? But if you go to a 60 horsepower or 70 horsepower tractor or something larger, well, on a 60 horsepower, you may only have 48 you know or 50 horsepower at the pto so you're going to lose 10 or 12 horsepower that way and not to muddy the waters too much but there is going to be a difference between hydrostatic machines and gear drive machines you're going to lose more horsepower with a hydro machine because part of that power is going to the hydrostatic system whereas a gear drive is just a, a more simplistic drive system all around and so your losses at the rear pto aren't as significant. Right here you have a PTO driven snowblower on the back of our tractor. So that PTO shaft is driving the auger that as you're moving forward, this is a pull type snowblower. So as you move forward, this auger spins around because it's being powered by the PTO shaft. It collects that snow and drives it up through the chute and, and shoots it out. So you need to be able to size your attachment to the amount of PTO horsepower that you have. All right, so other things come into play as well. You have to have a three point hitch system that is strong enough to lift up the attachment as well, but any good manufacturer is gonna have that information available, all right? So they're gonna offer this snowblower in 54, you know, 60 incremental segments all the way up to probably seven, eight foot wide, okay? And so all those different sizes of attachments are gonna have a different range of PTO horsepower that they can work with, all right? So maybe it's 18 horsepower up to 30 horsepower. And for a bigger one, maybe it's 40 horsepower minimum up to 100 horsepower maximum. So look for that range, or sometimes you may only see a minimum or only a maximum if the gearbox is not gonna be affected by anything else. But many attachments like a brush hog, for example, are gonna have a gearbox on them. And we just talked about the Dirt Dog uh, brush hogs recently, and they have a 60 horsepower rated gearbox. So that means 
at the PTO, they're rated to be used on a machine with up to 60 horsepower coming out of there. All right, now to get you in the right ballpark, take a look at this setup here. So it's typically, not always, but typically gonna work out that a PTO driven three point attachment is gonna match up with the width or be really darn close to the width of your tractor. And that's the case here. Our tractor is uh, 48 inches wide. We have a 54 inch wide snowblower. So it hangs out three inches wider on either side. And this is a great fit for this machine. So if you are completely lost, with what size attachment to get, measure the width of your tractor, and then find an attachment that's roughly the same size. And then at that point, you can kind of drill down deeper if you need to, look at the PTO ratings, see if it's gonna match up with what you need or if you need to go a size down or a size larger. All right, and while I've got your attention, just a few quick tips and pointers, so pay attention if you don't know much about PTO shafts, but there's a lot of parts of the system that are actually there to protect you, okay? But number one is oftentimes, depending on your tractor, if you hop off the tractor seat with the PTO gauge, it's going to kill the tractor, and that's a safety mechanism so that you're not driving a belly mower you know, all across the lawn, into the house, into the landscaping, into whatever else it is that it's not supposed to be. So that's safety item number one. Now right in this area, there's three more safety features as well. Number one, on the tractor, you're gonna have this shroud that goes up and down. You can lift it up to help make it easier to connect to your attachment. And then you're gonna have this plastic cover that goes over top. It's free floating like this, all right? Because this is not, or you don't want it to spin with the actual steel shaft that's inside of it there. So, and to help prevent that from spinning at a certain point, you can see these chains, all right? So these chains are meant to hold the shaft in place at a certain point, it won't spin any further once it gets there. And so this one, we actually broke off um, sometime recently, I don't know when exactly, but that's part of the downside of these chains is they are kind of flimsy and they will break. And so oftentimes you're gonna see it like this where this is free spinning. So the thing is you don't ever wanna get tangled up down here. In fact, there's this nasty looking picture uh, of this guy completely wrapped around his PTO shaft. All right, so uh, that's the idea, safety first. We've done a lot of videos on, on tractor safety, PTO safety. So make sure you check those out and watch them too. All right, so PTO shafts are gonna be a two part unit. So you have an inner and an outer, uh, section that slide over top of one another and it's going to be at its shortest point when it's perfectly level all right so anytime it's moving up above that or down below that it needs to lengthen out and if it was one piece well you'd be ripping something apart so that's why you have to have it slide over top of one another and you don't want to cut the shaft too long or too short if it's too short you potentially risk that shaft completely coming apart and if it's too long once you get to your shortest setup so as you go from a little bit longer like it's sitting on the ground right now as you raise that up it's going to get a little bit shorter and if you had it cut too long it could potentially bind up and if it's operating really wreak havoc and if it's even if it's off it could still bend that pto shaft a little bit so there's a sweet spot reference the manual that comes with whatever attachment is that you get there's a lot of information online these things are easy to cut down to you can cut it down with a hacksaw or a sawzall very easy to do just follow those instructions and you'll be good to go. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for us today. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of what a PTO is all about on your tractor. If you did enjoy today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below to see more. And if you're looking for something for your tractor for the front end loader or the three point hitch, we sell and ship attachments all across the country every day of the week. Check out goodworkstractors.com. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.